Okay, well, we're back for another year. Um, super looking forward to this. Uh, yeah, so I haven't actually touched any of my streaming setup since last year, so I'm a little bit, um, it's a bit fresh to me. So hopefully everything works. Um, yeah, so if you haven't seen what Advent of Code is before, it's kind of weird though. Um, to Well, nah, that, 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 that's not fair to say. Uh, if you haven't seen Advent of Code before, it's a series of challenges. Uh, you have one challenge every day. They're all coding challenges. So usually there's some kind of a problem that requires uh, a computer to solve. And um, yeah, it's a race to get, uh, to get to the right answers. So the way it works is everyone gets uh, the same problem, but with different inputs. And what that means is everyone's solution will be unique. So you can't just copy someone else's. Um, last year, I did this in JavaScript. JavaScript, I think, is um, one of the probably one of the better languages to do this sort of thing in. Um, that and maybe Python or something like that. This year, however, I have decided to do it in Go instead. And Go is not the kind of language that I think um, you can kind of work through, work, work to solution quite as efficiently as you can in uh, some of these other dynamic languages. And so that just means um, I'm still gonna shoot for speed, but I have doubts that I'm going to be able to get on the leaderboard this year. One um, other change I did, um, this year is that last year I was copy pasting the inputs into my um, into my uh, vim <laughs> my my IDE my 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 text editor um, just uh, because that was the easiest way for me to actually get the input into it. This year, what I've done is I've written a little um, tool which will download the data behind the scenes and. Um, actually give me a lot of options of how I can get that data into my um, into my program. So I can read them as, as strings, one per line, or as ints, or whatever. Go is known to um, not be very... Um, well, Go doesn't have generics, uh, which means that the types of um, your input become, become really important, uh, or else things just... It just doesn't like it. And so I've written a couple of helpers, which will automatically behind the scenes download and cache um, the inputs, which means I'm not going to be hammering their server with requests all the time. Uh, and once it's downloaded, I just have all these helper functions to help me get the input in whatever format I need them to be in. So hopefully that's all going to work. Um, yeah, have I missed anything else? I'm from New Zealand, uh, if that matters. <laughs> Um, and yeah, we're just going to wait for the countdown to hit zero and we're going to get started. Oh, I never kind of explained the way that the challenges work is that it usually tells a kind of story, uh, usually something to do with either you're going to the North Pole or Santa is stuck and you have to help his elves find him or fix something. Every year, the story is a little different and it just makes it just that little bit more inter more, more interesting. Um, yeah, I, I really enjoy the story. So I think this year what I'm going to do is actually take my time to read through it since I'm not shooting for that top 100 anyway. Um, and just really enjoy this um, story and the, these challenges. Uh, it's always fun to, to put something like this together. Uh, and to work on it. And I'm hoping that it's going to work out smoothly. So 10 second, uh, 15 seconds to go. Um, I'm just gonna wait until it starts. All right, here we go. The first advent of code challenge 2021. Oh, here's another interesting thing. This happened last year as well. The first day of every year, they get they get quite a lot more people doing these challenges than usual. And so um, usually, usually we run into a little bit of these problems with load. 
So we might just have to sit tight and let it come out. Okay, here we go. I'm just gonna shrink that a little bit. Hope it still shows up properly. Cool, okay, here we go. So I'm minding my own business on a ship at sea where the overboard alarm sound goes off. I rush to sea and apparently one of the elves tripped and accidentally sent the sleigh keys flying into the ocean. Before you know it, you're inside a submarine that the elves keep ready for situations like this. It's covered in Christmas lights, because of course it is, and it even has an experimental antenna that should be able to track the keys if you can boost its signal strength high enough. There's a little meter that indicates the antenna's signal strength by displaying 0 to 50 stars. My instincts tell me that in order to save Christmas, I'll need all 50 stars by December 25th. Collect stars by solving puzzles, etc. Okay, I'm going to skip that bit. So as the submarine drops below the surface of the ocean, it automatically performs a sonar sweep of the nearby sea floor. On a small screen, the sonar sweep report, which is my input, uh, which looks like it's just numbers. Um, I should try and read that. Yep, they're all just numbers. Great. Uh, so I'm going to read them in as numbers uh, and just get my program running. Um, where am I? Where was I? Each line is a measurement of the sea floor depth as the sweep looks further and further away from the submarine. Suppose, for example, suppose I had the following report. This report indicates that scanning outward from the submarine, the sonar sweep found depths of those numbers and so on. The first order of business is, is to figure out how quickly the depth increases so that you know what you're dealing with. You never know if the keys will be carried in deeper water by an ocean current or a fish or something. To do this, count the number of times a measurement, a depth measurement increases from the previous measurement. There is no measurement before the first measurement. In the example above, the changes are as follows. Increase, 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 increase. In this example, there are seven measurements that are larger than the previous measurement. So this is quite straightforward and we just have to um, uh, loop through the data and check them all and, and compare them all. There's a little bit of an off by one because we're actually comparing them in pairs. So we have to be careful that we don't um, uh, accidentally have an off by one error. Uh, so we're going to save the previous depth, the current depth, and we're going to start with the, the, the second element, which is, of course, ID1, um, index one. Uh, and just compare each one and count. Um, so if data i is greater than depth, count plus plus, and depth equals data i. That should be quite, that should be it. Don't really see if, how that could be wrong. So I'm just going to check that in, 1722. That's right. Let's go into the second half. So yeah, it's, it's a straightforward loop through that through the data. So considering every single measurement isn't as useful as you expected, there's too much noise in the in the data. Instead, consider sums of three measurement of a three measurement sliding window. Again, consider the above, the above example. Uh, start by comparing the first and second three measurement windows. The measurements in the first window are that. The sum is that. The second window is that. Sum is that. The sum of the measurements in the second is larger than the first, so this first comparison is increased. Um, okay. Your goal is now to count the number of times the sum of measurements in the sliding window increases. So to compare um, A with B, then compare B with C, and so on, stop, stop when there aren't enough measurements left to create a new three measurement sum. Um, in this example, there are five sums that are bigger. How many sums are larger than the previous? So this is um, quite straightforward again, uh, and we just have to manually do the do the sliding window. Just have to be a little bit careful with out of bounds things. I'm pretty sure minus two um, is the end of uh, when we. This is where we will have to stop reading. And uh, yeah, this one plus data i plus two. It's greater than depth, then count plus plus. Depth equals that plus that plus that. So we're just doing it in groups of three now instead.
was it bigger than my previous answer? Oh no, I messed up my <laughs> I messed up my um undo redo. That's my bad. Um Yeah, I would think it was 1748, right? Let's just chuck it in there. There we go. We got it right. I, I think it said one one seven four eight. So um yeah, it's literally just implementing what the spec says. Uh not too much uh interesting uh, not too much um new things in here. I guess in terms of writing this program, if you wanted to be a bit nicer, you could do this, uh, call that previous depth and call this current depth, just write it out like this. So uh, there's a little less, um, it's a little bit easier to read, potentially. Um, although I have, my own feelings about whether or not this is actually easier to read. Um, I forgot to, I read off the end of the array. Yeah, not my, yeah, that's not, not, not necessarily how I would write it. I think, uh, maybe I, uh, maybe I'll just do something like this, to be honest. something like that. Um, yeah, there really isn't that much more to this um, problem. So I think, uh, I think I'll leave it there. I'll just take a quick look at the stats. Uh, we've got lots of people who have solved it already. And leaderboard, I think, this guy, amazing, got first and second, the first, first and third on both of them. That's great. Really nice. Um, depends if this loads, maybe it won't load. We'll see. Yeah. I might just leave it. Uh, so like I said, not too much um, special about this particular uh, problem. It's it's a really straightforward problem where you just loop over an array and compare each element to the one before. The sliding window made it a little bit more tricky and you did have to do these extra um, additions of successive um, elements, but um, it doesn't, yeah, you can just do that on the fly. I think what, yeah, just looking at my ranks, how I got 2,000th for the first one and 900th for the second one, I think what some people felt they had to do is that they had to compute all the sliding windows, write them to an array first, and then compare that. That's another way to do it, but you can do it in place, uh, what's called in place, that is without writing it, uh, writing out your interme intermediate sums. Um, yeah, so uh, I'm looking forward to the rest of the challenges. It was a nice and easy start today. Hopefully, um, yeah, we'll get something, we'll keep on this journey of uh, trying to find the sleigh keys in the middle of the ocean, and we'll continue that tomorrow. So thanks for joining me, and I'll see you next time.